When I first committed to the University of Michigan, I was not sure if I wanted to rush a sorority, but upon getting there and being really anxious socially, I decided to try it. So I went through the rush process and I do remember feeling like pressure to not be who I was, to make myself seem cooler or more sophisticated or interesting. And I ended up getting a bid from Sigma Kappa. At Michigan, there's a ranking system for sororities, the best ones to the worst ones. It's very arbitrary and you can tell is based on very superficial things. So I ended up bidding um, a quote unquote good sorority. For once, it felt like I was wanted by the cool girls and I you know, drank the Kool-Aid. And I remember pretty early on there was a party and a girl messaged in the group saying, you know, be careful at that frat that we're going to. My roommate got drugged last week. And one of the older girls responded and said, you guys can't be spreading that around because we'll never be invited there again. So I instantly felt like the whole point was like, we wanted to be liked by the cool guys and the cooler that we could be, the better it was for our reputation, even if that meant our sisters being drugged. So I almost instantly felt turned off by the whole thing. I feel like I was ostracized for hanging out with people that weren't as cool. And I kind of got comments like, the reason we're tier 1B and not better, not cooler, not hotter, is because you affiliate yourself with uncool people. So I instantly pretty much thought it was bullshit, but I had signed to live in the house. So I couldn't really drop out. So I did my sophomore year and when you're a sophomore, you have to rush the incoming girls. Our first few meetings was us sitting in the basement looking through PowerPoint pictures of girls that would be coming into the house that we wanted. And all of these girls seemed to be very similar type, very beautiful, very cool, thin, came from money. And then the way the rush process works is that you have like five minute conversations with someone and you have to make a decision on them. We were making snap judgments on these people based on their looks, their class, their race, their size, and not anything that had to do with sisterhood. And so I started skipping rush meetings, but they fined you $100 per party and there could be like 10 parties a day. And so I couldn't get fined. So I kind of tried to like disrupt the system by like messing up the rankings and sort of getting really hot headed about it all. So I ended up dropping and dedicating a lot of time to speaking out about what I thought was so wrong about Greek systems. The way it pits women against each other, the way it's completely grounded in misogyny, patriarchy, fat phobia, racism, classism, homophobia, the list could only go on. Just because something's history or tradition doesn't mean it's okay. If one woman feels as though she was ostracized on the base of her race, sex, size, sexual orientation, looks, anything, that's enough to say something's a problem. If one male dies as a result of Greek hazing, that's enough to say something's a problem. And it's really important to me that I continue to speak out about this so that we can at least educate people on what happens behind closed doors and how terribly toxic the system really is.